Hey guys, Cassie TV here with another build guide showcase. Today we're going to talk about a fireball igniter and I actually chose to do this as a trickster rather than a rather than a little an elementalist. I can't even speak. Rather than an elementalist. Okay, there we go. So, um, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, we're using a ton and I mean a ton of mind over matter effect. Uh, which we talked about in the last video, but I'm going to show you the calculation of mind of matter in this video. Now this is calculated with basic algebra, so I want to talk about this before we do the map so people actually get a good understanding and can look at the start of this video if they want to know how to calculate it. It's basic algebra, so for those of you who skipped school or don't know how to do math, uh, basically you take on a 30% mind of matter, where 30% of your damage incoming is taken from your mana pool before your life pool, what basic algebra calculation means is that you take 3 divided by 7, 10 being 100%, you get 0.428. This is how you calculate your HP, uh, your effective HP by taking your HP pool, in this case being 4,847, 4,847, multiplied by 1.428. 6,921. Great, right? It's very easy, but you have to sustain this mana to be able to have this effective HP, and that's calculated the exact same way, just the other way, well, the opposite way. So 4,847 multiplied by 0 0.428. Enter. So I would need, with the 30% mind of a matter effect, I would need a bit below 2,100 mana unreserved, or energy shield if you use Eldritch Battery, one, of course. So. I don't include my energy shield because it's not always there, so that's, I'm only looking at the HP and uh, my mana pool for this. However, this build is utilizing Cloak of Defiance, which gives another 10% of Mind of a Matter. And because we have Cloak of Defiance giving us Mind of a Matter, we never actually take the Keystone because it's provided through the chest piece. Now we do the same thing here. With a 40% Mind of a Matter, you take 4 divided by 6 rather than 3 divided by 7, which is 0 0.6666666, right? So the same calculation here is 4,847 multiplied by 1.666. And you see that I have a bit over 8,000 effective HP. But I need to sustain this, right? So the way to check the calculation of sustaining it, you take it the calculation on the, other, on the opposite side, which means 4,847 multiplied by 0 0.666. And you'll see that I need 3,228 mana unreserved to sustain this effective HP. And if you then quickly glance down at the bottom right, I have way more mana than I need. And the tree has availability of specking into even more mana if the mana is not provided from your gear. So we're going to show you some gameplay footage as to talk about the build. And then I'm going to show you all the details, gear and everything. Um, bandits, you're going to kill them all. Pantheons, matter of personal taste. I went with a Brine King and then Shakari. I don't even have them upgraded because I'm lazy with this build today. Um, so those are the Pantheons that you're going to go for if you want to, but they're a matter of personal taste, you do whatever you want with them. This is not a, fi a vol fireball build, this is a fireball igniter, uh, which means that most of the clearing is done through just spamming out fireball. Bosses, uh, not really an issue, I don't think it's going to be a problem to do shaper at all, I doubt that. Uh, however, doing something like Uber Elder is a big no-go. Uh, Chimera was a bit troublesome in my opinion, uh, so... Um, I'm only going to do this blight if there's a boss in it, just to show you, but there is no boss, so we're going to skip it. Um, but yeah, it's it's very straightforward. Um, as you can see, the clearing is pretty smooth, the sustaining is pretty smooth with it as well. Uh, we're going to talk more about that, some options you can do. For extra single target, I'm using a fire trap gem, uh, which is really helpful for uh, getting that extra damage on bosses, which is also used uh, for the sake of uh, doing something like um, blight bosses, for example. Um, granted, this is not a bossing build, so if you feel that you're having issues with single target on the blighted encounters, uh, you can always use uh, meteor towers, and if they're if they're immune to uh, meteor tower damage, such as the, because it's being fire, you can use whatever you want, like minion stacking and whatnot. Uh, as you can see here, I just put up my wave of conviction, the fire trap, and then um, something I I kind of having hard to get used to. Uh, is uh, the fact that I usually want to spam the fireball like this uh, since the hit damage is really low and is more about the actual ignition you shouldn't spam it versus bosses you should click it once, put the wave of conviction, throw the trap out put a decoy totem out and then do the rotation again to keep all the all the ignites and debuffs up basically 
and that's how you maximize your DPS output. And uh, that's that's basically it. It's it's very straightforward. But uh, coming from someone like me who has played a lot of a lot of builds that have been hitting, or at least being designed where you hold down one of your keys uh, to kill someone, it's been uh, pretty uh, it's been pretty hard to get used to uh, uh, not spamming. And the same thing goes for this, like I can click this once and there will be proliferations all over the field, so I don't necessarily have to spam on during clearing either. I can do Wave of Conviction and I can do, oh, the Lightning Mirage guys actually hurts, uh, but easily dodged obviously. Uh, but yeah, like you have to think about that. Um, it's okay if you spam it, it's just you're going to do a little bit less damage than making sure that you have all your debuffs or uh, whatever applied, right? So, uh, I'm playing a Trickster because I, fe I felt that you could actually get better damage numbers uh, doing it as a Trickster, rather than uh, going with um, with an Elementalist that gets the proliferation for free through Beacon of Ruin, for example. Um, but we did choose to uh, to play this as, uh, as a Trickster because it's also faster. As you can see in the top left corner, we are generating both Frenzy and Power Charges, which are giving us damage. And I also double-checked the... the difference between having a dual slot versus getting those extra frenzy charges that are specced on the tree and the damage is basically the calculation is this one extra frenzy charge for this build is equal to a jewel that has two damage modifiers and obviously you're going to want to have life on those jewels potentially man if you're lacking that but shouldn't need this uh, need that with this build so basically you want to have life and then uh, two damage modifiers which are kind of expensive so to cut down on your budget, you can use one damage modifier instead, um, and instead you can just focus on getting, um, on getting, um, what's its face? I just said it, uh, frenzy charges. So I am level 86 with this build, so I'm going to show you the build on POB to give you an idea of how it looks. So as you can see, the um, fireball damage ignition is about 320,000 shaper DPS. Now it could be a little bit lower with a little bit lower currency invested. I'm going to show you all the details of it. And to help with boss killing, we're using Fire Trap, which deals another mil half a million Shaper DPS, which is how you bring down bosses. Now, the numbers does tell you that you should be able to do Uber Elder, right? The thing is, this is DPS uh, that are calculated when you have a Wave of Conviction up uh, on the enemy, and you've used uh, your Fireball, and then used uh, Fire Trap, which grants you about 800,000 Shaper DPS. That's three abilities that you need to use, and you need to refresh these as well, which can be somewhat troublesome. So the build should be able to do Railer, but I wouldn't recommend using it for it, because it could be pretty messy. Um, you can also see that in the tree, we pretty much start off with going out this way. You can level with whatever spell you want to. Uh, I wouldn't recommend focusing on Ignitions till later. So basically I went out with elemental damage, trickery, pick up the life nodes, and if you're using something like uh, Bane or whatever when you're leveling, I wouldn't recommend using that with this tree though, but you could if you want to, you could actually take the chaos damage nodes out instead of the elemental ones, and go coordination into entropy and to pick up blood drinker. Uh, mana nodes, I do believe I actually skipped the, oops, uh, skipped these blood, uh, mana nodes because I have too much mana for my gear, so I've skipped these nodes for now, which is perfectly fine. Um, and the Frenzy Charge is something I take when I'm done with the tree, basically. So when I'm done with the tree, then I take Frenzy Charges and then Jewel Slots, basically. Um, and then you continue out here to rush down to Deep Wisdom. Arcane Will, again, something you don't take till you start using Mind Over Matter. Uh, and then you have Heart and Soul for Life and Mana, Into Arcane's Dominion and Firewalker. I would recommend going up to Cruel Preparation, and if you're leveling with a Fire Skill, you can take Heart of Flame for the hit damage, but if you do choose to go with Ignitions, then Breath of Flame is what you're going to want later. And then rush into Elemental Overload because it's a lot of damage, as well as picking up Quick Recovery and going down for the Life Nodes Constitution down here. Um, Dark Arts is something I wouldn't recommend until you start dual wielding, obviously, because it's just to make sure that your Flame Dash has as low cooldown as possible. Same thing with going into Holy Fire, Purity of Flesh, and then Arcane Capacitor. I actually chose to take this one, even if I have too much mana, because of the effect of Arcane Search, which is really, really nice. And then you take the um, fire damage over time multiplier into divine judgment as well as life into holy dominion on life as well as retribution it's very straightforward uh ascendancy wise again if you're not leveling with ignitions start with thrift killer if you have mind of matter when you do cruel lab then get weave of the arcane weave the arcane it's really nice and then take the damage over time effects here uh but again it's very straightforward on uh, on the fact that it is a matter of personal taste that it comes into play for most of these things when, you, when you're leveling and in which order you want to do it or if you have the currency to spend on buying something like a 
uh, two damage multiplier jewel. As you can see on the damage here, I only have one damage modifier on all of these jewels. And I do have a um, Watcher's Eye, which is very, very cheap. This one I've actually taken because of um, quality of life. This is by far not needed, but it is using the modifier damage taken uh, from mana before life while affected by clarity, allowing me to have an even higher um, Mind of a Matter effect. Uh, in this case, it's 8%. And to show you the quick calculation of how that would look, means that I have 48% uh, percent Mind of a Matter, which means you take 4.8, uh, divided by 5.2 and you see that it's 0 0.92 instead and the 4847 um, means that I would need 4.4k mana to fully sustain. I chose not to do this uh, because of my level because the remaining levels I have would be invested into more mana to build this up but it is currently perfectly fine the way I have it so when you come to a certain point of sustaining uh, I know that I can only take about a uh, 4000 give you sense I have too, not enough mana I can show you that if you just add it like this I can take a huge hit of 8.4k and then I'll die if I take a hit that is lower than that I will always survive but I have a huge amount of sustainability on this mana pool so my my EHP is not the, is not higher because of the minor matter effect but my sustainability of it is absolutely there and that's thanks to having gear pieces like um, sorry like gear pieces well I could have on gear as well I've taken one of my oiling into battle rouse, which takes 8% of the damage taken is gained as mana. So every time I take hit, I take damage, I will always regain mana pool from it. And that's because we're using the stampede boots and uh, having oil on the amulet as well. You could craft on, the, on your ring, for example, to craft um, a modifier that grants you damage taken gained as mana um, over four seconds, I think. And um, when you're hit, allowing you to even further emphasize on regenerating more mana as you're being hit. So you don't necessarily need to get exactly to the cap, it's okay to be a bit below. Uh, but as you see, we're using the Stampede Unique Boots, uh, allowing us to do another oil, which I've chosen to do Arsonist, because it gives us a lot of extra damage over time multiplier. Uh, the other one is Battle Rouse, as I showed you down here. And then the other unique uh, I showed you before was Local Defiance, as well as Snake Pit, the left ring, which allows us to fork the uh, the fireball. So they put up this ignition for, um, proliferation pretty much everywhere. And that's it for unique items. Uh, something I did choose to do was get a Shaper Legion Gloves. These are just to help you uh, get more damage on your fire trap. If we take a look at the gloves I have in the POB, they only have the fire damage over time multiplier and they don't have the trap and mine damage support, which is what I'm using here on the, my current build, allowing me to remove trap and mine damage and put in another support uh, than what's shown in the POB, because in the POB, we are showing uh, trap and mine damage, conk effect and burning damage. Instead, I'm actually having efficacy. Uh, so there's that little detail that you can do if you want to invest more currency and get that support for your fire trap. But I would prioritize the fire damage over time multiplier. This is available on Shaper Gloves. Not really expensive to buy these, but they were pretty expensive to roll yourself. Uh, I am using a Stygian Vice um, belt with a damage over time. Uh, well, dual wielding in this case, plus life on the jewels. Not very good jewels, very cheap. The belt itself has just a ton of life. It actually did have mana and resistances. The helmet, I went with Flame Dash cooldown recovery, don't really need it because you have a pretty short cooldown as is on it, uh, depending on how much currency you want to invest into it. Uh, the, I crafted this myself with a Scorched and Pristine Fossils, giving me life uh, and fire rest. I did get lucky and actually slammed in mana on it for the lols and the YOLO reasons. So that's why we have so much mana without specking into all the mana nodes on my current build. Um, the amulet, pretty straightforward, just life, mana, resistances. Uh, and then we go to the weapons. Now, the weapons, uh, what I was looking for was plus one level of all fire skill gems, and the second priority was having um, a flat mana roll. As you can see, this, this one itself gives me 159 flat mana, which is absolutely brutal. Uh, and then I made sure that it had an open prefix slot, and that's because I wanted to craft 20% fire damage over time multiplier on it, for that extra damage and the other rolls were just bonuses in this case this one is support uh, with crits which doesn't do anything there was a tier one mana region a cold damage doesn't do anything the spell damage modifier here does not affect the ignition so that's the, something you can ignore entirely uh, elemental damage would uh, work though 
So in this case, you're in a situation where uh, you just prioritize having flat mana plus level of fire skills and then have an open prefix for crafting damage over time multiplier for fire. And it's the same thing with, with this uh, one here. It only gives me 115 mana plus one level of fire skills and there's a 20% fire damage over time multiplier crafted. And I did manage to find one with a little bit of projectile speed, not really needed. And everything else is completely useless for this build. And the Cinder Swall I'm using is actually 15% of damage taken from hits as Leech's life. I don't really notice this too much, it's a bit whatever. I'm using a Heat, Adrenaline, Warding and a Staunching, Staunching Flask for the build. And I think that covers the details of the build. So I'm going to show you a Phantasmagoria as I finalize uh, my thoughts on this build. Uh, I've been having fun with it. Uh, it is more of a generic clear speed oriented build. Uh, something I found a bit annoying with it was the fact that if you want to keep your speed up, you have to use Flame Dash on a consistent basis. All right, we're going to talk about the skill gems. Um, talk about the, the fact that if you want to be fast, as you can see, this is the speed you get uh, when you're adrenaline and with Quicksilver. It looks like this. It's not very fast. So you're supposed to use Flame Dash on a consistent basis, which have it feels weird. I'm not sure how it looks for you guys watching the video or here on the stream, but it does feel weird because it's like you're bouncing back and forth, right? Well, not back and forth, but you're, you're kind of like stuttering forward. And that to me feels really, really weird. There's no boss here, so we're gonna skip this one. Um, I don't know, it, it just feels weird to play, but I mean, maybe someone likes it, maybe some don't. Uh, but that's, that's my only true main problem I have with this build, to be honest. It's, uh, that's why you see me running for the most part, rather than using Flame Dash, because it just feels weird. Uh, but basically, it's a clear speed build, which does mean that you could use something like a Biscuit's Leash Belt, allowing you to get Rampage uh, to move faster if you want to run, uh, but also increase your generic clear speed and also the generic damage increasements for it would also apply to you. Uh, I think that's about it. There are multiple ways of doing a Fireball Igniter build. You can even look into doing a Vol Fireball build. Uh, Vol Fireball looks like this, and once you got Vol Fireball activated, you pretty much just run. Didn't show that on the last map. Um, but since the duration is very short, uh, with the design of the build being focused on actual Fireball ignition rather than fire, a Vol Fireball, um, it kind of depends on how you want to play it. But it's pretty nice. I do use it versus bosses, because then I can. Um, do it like this. I start ball fireball, put the trap up, and he does stop moving, and then I do my spells, and then he's going to die. It, it's very straightforward. Like I said, just fireball, trap, and then wave of conviction. If you want to, you can put a decoy if you feel like you're not tanky enough. That's it. All right, so we talked about the support chips for the fire trap already. So now I'm going to show you the, the other support chips. Since this one has supported uh, supporting gems in it with crit, I have my clarity decoy and a portal in here you can move the portal away and use a golem if you want to it's just that i get very annoyed when my golems die uh, so i actually skipped golems entirely uh, but basically decoy totem and level one clarity and the only reason i'm using level one clarity is as i mentioned before uh, where is my watcher side there it is uh is because of the damage taken gain is mana uh on this build uh when hit by effect by clarity the pub is showing you the extra might of a matter effect which i don't use in this build because we don't have mana for it uh, but in this case we're using damage taking gain as mana which goes up to 20 percent even so this is one of the ways we are easily sustaining our mana pool um in the other weapon we're using a standardized castle damage taken immortal call with a high level duration gem and before anyone starts asking the castle damage taken is again a matter of personal taste i've always preferred to have a level three castle damage taken with a level five immortal call or lower the problem is that since immortal call doesn't give you immunity anymore it would arguably um be better to have a higher level castle damage taken these days i just get really satisfied with having it this, this way the in the helmet, I'm using Wave of Conviction together with increased duration, arcane surge, and added fire damage. And the reason we're using this is to make sure that Wave of Conviction is doing the fire damage application of this, which it already is, uh, because we're already scaling fire damage. It shouldn't be able to do anything with the lightning. But I'm using anti fire, it doesn't make it do that much damage. It's a little bit of extra hit, but whatever. Um, the flame dash setup is a bit overkill. Uh, I'm using a faster casting. Flame Dash, and then this is if you want to, you don't have to go crazy because I just had the gems lying around, but I have a level four in power, and level four in hands. You can use them if you want to. They don't need to be level four. They can be whatever, because the difference is very, very minimal because they, all they do is basically reduce the cooldown of your Flame Dash and uh, or increase the cooldown recovery, rather. 
And last but not least, we're using the Vol Fireball, which is linked with a Combustion, Ignite Proliferation, Burning Damage, Deadly Ailments, as well as a GMP. Now, if you want to be real picky, you can change uh, greater uh, GMP um, to another support gem for single target if you wish, but that's why we have the Fire Trap in the, in the, in the links. So that's basically the build. Um, I will leave a description in the description below. I'll leave a PUB link. And um, if you managed to watch the, the video this far, I swear to God, I hope you, you click that like button and subscribe button because we got to pray to the YouTube algorithm gods, okay? That's like the only way content creators can do shit on YouTube these days. So you want to help me out, you smash that like button until it wishes it was never born. And then hit the subscribe button once, you know, that's okay. And don't forget the little bell to get notified if you want to see more content like this. But that like button better be dead when I watch this video later today, okay? So anyways, hope you guys have a great night. If you hit me up in the comments below what you think of the build. Until next time, stay safe and keep rocking.